Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Connect Groups. I'm going to take just a moment and recap this past Sunday's message. That way, you'll have plenty of time to discuss it. So we were continuing in our series on marriage, and what we focused on is the roles that both the husband and wife play in marriage. And we looked at Paul's teaching that he wrote to the church in Ephesus. And before we got into that, we set some foundational work so that all of us could be on the same page. And I began by asking some questions, and here are a few of them. Do we want to honor Jesus in our lives? Do we believe that the pathway that Jesus has laid out for us is actually the best way to live? Are we willing to die to ourselves? These questions are questions that we have to wrestle with, I think, more as Christians. In my experience, many Christians don't wrestle with the concept of dying to themselves enough, and they have it maybe in their mind, this misconception that Christianity is going to be easy. But in truth, it's a very difficult path to walk down because it's so countercultural. And so we began with just setting the foundation. Do I really want to honor Jesus? I mean, I believe that He is my Savior. I believe that through this relationship, I can have forgiveness of sins, and eventually I'm going to experience eternity with Him. And so I believe that I want that. I desire that. But the pathway to get there is one where we have to die to ourselves and trust in Him that the life He lays out for us from this point all the way through eternity is the best life possible. And then once we begin there, we start to look at our roles in life, and we look at them differently. Our culture will tell us to act a certain way, and then the Bible will come and say, no, that's the worst way to live. That's a wrong way to live. And we have to be willing to die to ourselves in what is culturally the norm, what is easy to do, die to that for the potential of experiencing the best life that Jesus offers. And so when we looked at marriage and we looked at what Paul had to say, Again, we did a little bit of foundational work of saying the audience that Paul is writing to is not a couple who have drawn lines in the sand, a a couple that is wanting to fight for their own rights and they want to debate everything that they're going to give. That's not it. The couple Paul is writing to is a couple that wants to become one. So it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing. doesn't matter what they've done in the past. It's a couple that's saying, I really want to be one the way that God designed marriage to be. And Paul says, okay. If you want to do that, here's what's required of you. And he speaks to the wives first, and he says, here's what you're called to do. So truthfully, he speaks to everyone and says, we're all called to submit one to another. But then he says, wives, here's the role that you need to take in your marriage. You need to submit to your husband. You need to put his preference above your own. You need to put his desires above your own. You need to put what he wants above your own. So the focus of your life becomes about honoring him, respecting him, doing what he wants. And when we hear that, I mean, I don't even have to explain that. That is so countercultural that it actually feels weird to say. Like at the best, it just seems old fashioned, but at the worst, it seems wrong that we should never tell a woman, especially in modern culture, a woman to submit to a man. But what it's talking about, again, is not just women in general submitting to men. It's talking about a wife submitting to your own husband, to the husband, that relationship of becoming one. And when we, look at the, when we looked at this, we, we recognized there's a lot of fear with that. There's a lot of risk because they're so vulnerable in that relationship. What if they don't respond? What if they don't lead in a proper way? But all of this can be summarized in, in hope and in faith. In faith, we obey God. We believe that He knows what's best. And in hope, we believe that it's going to positively impact the marriage. And so the risk is you might submit and He not change and you not become really one. That's a risk. But if you don't submit, it's a certainty that you'll never become one. And so Paul says, this is your role. You're going to submit. So then Paul shifts, and he goes to the husbands. And what I highlighted on Sunday is this, I think, kind of fascinating. He spent a couple of verses talking to the women, and then he goes like five times, about 10 verses, quite a bit more information in talking to the men. And as he turns to them, he says, husbands, here's what you're called to do. You're the head of the relationship. You're the head of the family. So jokingly, it's like, yeah, high five that, man. We got it so good as husbands. We're the head of it. And he goes, and this is how you're going to do it, the same way that Christ saved the church. And how did he do that? He died. Husbands, here's what you're called to do. You're called to love your wife through dying to yourself. And so the same way that a wife is called to submit and die to herself, her wants, her preferences, a husband in every way is called to lead his wife, not through dominance, not through aggression, but through serving, through love, through putting her first with the ultimate goal. And this is such an incredibly powerful and beautiful calling. 
your relationship with your wife as a husband should be one that makes her more like Christ, that draws her into a deeper relationship with Jesus, where she willingly and lovingly and excitedly follows Jesus. So you should lead in such a way that she wants to follow you toward Christ. And so at the end of your marriage, if you want to look at it that way, I'm talking about death, not divorce. At the end of your marriage, your wife should be more secure, should be more in love with Jesus because of the way that you led. And so we are called, I believe, to a much higher and more difficult calling than our wives. I think the idea of submission is very difficult. It's not in our nature. But for husbands, we, that bar is raised, and we are to submit or die to ourselves with the hope that our wives can become more like Christ. And when, hear this, when both of us, husbands and wives, do our part, the guaranteed result is oneness. If a wife will submit and a husband will die to himself and love his wife that way, the guaranteed result is oneness. And this is the promise of God. And so what we're called to, wives, respect your husbands in behavior, and hopefully your emotion will follow that. Husbands, love your wives, die to yourselves. So this is our calling. Is this easy? Absolutely not. It's so difficult. It's painful. It's frustrating. We do well in some seasons. We fail in other seasons. But this always has to be the goal that we strive for. And so my encouragement to you as couples, as you talk, similar to what I said last week, I hope you can engage this in realness, but I hope you can also be very respectful of each other. This is not a time to point out where your wife is not submitting and your husband is not leading in a godly way or loving way. It's a time to be self-reflective, looking at what God has called you to do. And I believe as we strive toward this, our marriages are going to get healthier and healthier because we're going to become more like one. I love you guys. Uh, and I, if I haven't noticed, uh, said this already, if you have any questions, send them in because I'm going to be doing a Q&A a video here soon in this series uh, where I can answer all your questions that you have on marriage the same way that I did in our last series on the Holy Spirit. Love you guys. See you Sunday.